Welcome to the State of the CIO 2019. I'm Tom McDonald with the CIO Executive Council. And once again, we've teamed up with our colleagues at CIO to take a sneak peek at their 18th annual IT Leader Survey. We're gonna dive into the data today. We've got two highly accomplished CIOs joining us and standing by to give us their reactions to this year's findings. Joining us today are CIO and SVP of Novant Health, Letty Nettles. Welcome, Letty. Thank you, glad to be here. And SVP and CIO of Carhartt, John Hill. Welcome to you, John. Yeah, thank you, happy to be here as well. Great to have you both and just stand by for a minute. We'll be getting back to you. And for those of you watching live on Twitter, you can use the hashtag State of the CIO to post any comments or questions you might have. And we'll see if we can work those into the conversation today. So we've got a lot of great information to cover and we're extremely fortunate to have someone who probably knows that information better than anyone as our host today. He is the SVP GM of IDG Events and publisher at CIO, Adam Dennison. Take it away, Adam. Thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, and Letty, John, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join us. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we did something similar last year and it's a lot of fun. So um, let's go ahead and, and, and get things started. Uh, so as Tom mentioned, we're gonna, we're gonna be reviewing uh, the uh, state of the CIO uh, research today. We're in our 18th year with this study. I'll kind of show you some of the numbers here and on, on what we'll be looking at. Um, this really takes a good look at uh, the, the understanding the role of the CIO, uh, what role and position it is that they're playing in their organization right now, uh, what their responsibilities are, how they interact with their business side counterparts, uh, what the challenges are, and then what some of the top priorities are for the coming year. So it's a really good kind of gauge on that. Um, keep in mind that this was fielded back in the September of uh, 2018 timeframe. Um, and then you can see here from the, the, the quick numbers, we have uh, just over 900 uh, total respondents. Of that, 683 are what we call heads of IT. So we ask a simple question, are you the top IT decision maker in your business unit, division, location, enterprise-wide? If yes, we move you into the study. If not, you're removed from the study. So it is really a pure play uh, CIO head of IT study. It is global in nature as well. We've got about 70% of it from the US and 30% international. We do have a line of business uh, counterparts that we, that we uh, uh, feel the study out too as well. We have 250 of those folks. I'll let you know when we bring them in and do a compare and contrast with the head of ITs along with the line of business. And then this year from an average company size, uh, pretty good solid numbers here, uh, just over or just under 12,000 uh, average employees from a company size, so really heavy enterprise here. It goes cross verticals and then again, um, uh, it was fielded in the, in the September timeframe, so keep that in mind. So let's take a look at uh, where does the time go? So we're gonna spend a little bit of time on this. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the, the average uh, tenure of a CIO. And uh, this is an interesting um, stat line here that we've been studying and, and we show trending here back to 2012. This is one of the areas that a lot of folks have some misperceptions. They think the CIO might really be in that role for two or three years as an average. But you can see here since uh, 2012, we've really climbed up nicely. This year it's at an all time high from the study and we're at uh, seven years and two months. And there's really no separation when you look on the right hand side there with the enterprise at seven years, two months and within the SMB at seven, four. The delineation we use for SMB and enterprise for the purposes of this study is a thousand or more employees, just so you're aware. Uh, so again, very strong numbers here. You know, from my perspective, I look at technologies really driving to the, to the center of business, being looked at to drive new revenues within an organization. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The reporting to the CEO is still up at an all-time high of right around 43 to 45%. So when you have those there and they wanna have stability within that CIO role, I think that's, that leads to why we have the higher numbers here. Now certainly we'll, we'll, we'll keep a gauge on this over the next few years. We do have some baby boomers in there that are gonna be looking to retire soon. We also have some CIOs that have been moving out of their roles into a CDO type role or a COO type role. Um, that obviously will create some churn and, and, and backfill within those positions. But, but, but right now, again, we are at, a, a, you know, at an all time high for the average tenure there. And this is a question we asked last year, a couple questions. Basically what we're looking at here is how much uh, CIOs uh, agree with these two statements. And, and you can see here 91% of CIOs say that their role is becoming more digital and innovation focused. Uh, last year that number was 87, so we went up a few ticks. And then you can see also though that 80% of CIOs are saying that their role is extremely challenging right now, you know, having one foot in innovation, one foot in operations. Um, we saw that the past few years. I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. And we'll certainly get Letty and John's uh, uh, perspective on that in just a couple of minutes here. 
And then really at the state, uh, really at the heart of this study for the last 18 years, and we haven't done anything to change uh, the methodology behind this this question here. Simple question is how do you spend most of your time? You know, what activities are you are you uh, most focused on uh, during essentially your day to day uh, role as a CIO? Uh, I'll show you what those um, response uh, options are in a second. We provide them with 15 choices. Uh, and we allow them to choose up to five. And five of those choices would equate you to being a functional uh, CIO. So think more, you know, heads, heads down, technologists, maybe back office some. Uh, five would equate you to being a transformational CIO. And then five would equate you to being a strategic or business strategist CIO. And what we're seeing here is the trending back to 2010. Um, and you can see there's been quite a bit of movement uh, really within the strategic and within the functional uh, uh, buckets here. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, transformational has been number one uh, throughout the entire study for 18 years. You can see in 2011 there, we almost eclipsed that with the functional. That was really after the, after the thaw of the, uh, of the Great Recession in 2009. And then really, if you look at this timeline, anything between 2010 and 2014 can really be attributed to economic conditions. And then from 14 to today can really be attributed to, um, to security and risk management. So you can see we, we climbed back up in, from a strategic standpoint in 2014. That was the year of the breach. And then we moved our way back down. Uh, again, 18 years ago when we launched this study, we bucketed security management as being functional. If I were to re rework this today, I certainly wouldn't have that as a functional role. I would have that more of a strategic role. We know that uh, you know, things have obviously changed dramatically from a security standpoint, not just in the last 18 years, but within the last three to five years. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna show you where they're gonna, uh, where they actually bucketed out here in terms of time spent. And then before I do that, if you just take a quick look over on the right-hand side, we, we want to get a sense of what's happening today as well as what's kind of out that, that windshield. And we looked three years out and said, how do you think you'll spend most of your time? And as you can see here, huge shifts. Uh, strategic jumps up to 56%. Uh, transformational drops considerably. And then functional is almost uh, completely off the table. I can promise you they won't get there. That's a little bit more aspirational. But at least we're you know, working toward that uh, year over year. Now I'll spend a couple minutes here just, uh, just taking this in, and then I want to get Letty and John's uh, feedback on what we've been uh, discussing so far. So again, as you look at this, you can see over on the functional side, the different, uh, uh, you know, different choices that we bucket as functional. Uh, this is the second year in a row that security management comes up as the number one area that they're spending their time. Uh, before that, the last 16 years, it was aligning IT initiatives with business goals. Uh, that is in the number two position this year. Um, and then you can see over on the right-hand side, those, uh, those various strategic uh, functions and activities. Every one of those went up over the past year, which is obviously a great sign, um, but still an awful lot of time spent around uh, you know, aligning IT initiatives and goals, improving IT operations, things of that nature. Um, so with that, I um, also want to let you know the, the bolding here is anything three years out, 10% uh, uh, gains or drops is what we bolded here. So we have a, pretty much everything in that functional area goes down uh, considerably. Uh, aligning IT initiatives, business goals goes down considerably, as does cultivating the IT business partnership. Uh, my view on that is a lot of that work has been done right now. And again, if you see reporting into the CEO it remains strong, you see 10 years up, it makes sense that those relationships are being built across the business. So they don't have to spend as much time there. They're spending more time uh, focusing on their customer. How do they drive revenue? How do they drive their business forward? So with that, I'm going to pause here for, for a couple of minutes. Um, Letty and John, Letty, we'll go to you first. Um, you know, based on what I've shared so far, how does that uh, how does that compare to your organizations, how you're spending your time and what you're seeing essentially across you know, your peer set out there? Yeah, uh, great. So since healthcare is uh, playing catch up as latecomers to the digital disruption party, um, I really have to focus across all three areas. And, but a large part of my time is um, on business strategies, such as finding new ways for technology to create access to care and finding new ways to deliver care that can improve patient experiences and outcomes. Um, so, but to be a good strategist, I need to be able to put those ideas into play quickly. So I do spend another large part of my time um, driving that transformational change, you know, the way we work um, and the things that we need to do to mature ourselves as a business, like um, getting our product and services portfolio solid, uh, getting a line of sight of how to mature those products and rallying the teams to think about continually improving uh, value for products. Um, and then, of course, I spend some time on the uh, the functional activities, specifically the financial management piece and uh, vendor management and value management. Great. Thank you. Uh, John, what's your perspective here? 
Yeah, so Adam, I think the one thing is similar to Laddie, uh, the what I see is that the demand across all three of those areas continues to explode every year. There's really no uh, letting, uh, letting down on that. Even for myself, if I look at it, I probably spend 85% of the time on the transformational and strategic. But the real implication is, at least for myself, is that puts more pressure for me to have an outstanding leadership team because they have to be able to operate at the C, the C level uh, as well directly. It doesn't need to go through me. So, you know, we're in a great spot here at Carhartt that, that the uh, IT leadership team is able to do that. So that frees me up to spend more time on the strategic and transformational, uh, knowing that I've got a team that can take care of the functional largely uh, on their own. Yeah, so when I say that, uh, you know, for the past few years that we're seeing that 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 tightrope, that balance of of walking between innovation and operations, uh, I don't see that changing, you know, really anytime soon. Is it safe to assume that, that, that neither of you do as well based on what you just said? I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That, those are table stakes to keep everything running. Perfect. All right, so let's just keep moving through here, and then I'll come back to Letty and John and get some more feedback. Um, we're going to get into sort of digital business now. Um, I know digital is uh, still a, a, it's a buzzword out there. You know, we're guilty of it in the media. The tech vendors are guilty of it. Um, but it's still one that's obviously getting an awful lot of play out there. It means a lot of different things to different people. Um, but let's try to put some uh, some structure around that and get an understanding of, of, of what CIOs are, are, are struggling with today and what they're doing around digital. This is a new question, again, we asked this year. I found this pretty interesting. 88% of CIOs say that they are more involved in leading digital transformation initiatives than compared to their business counterparts. Uh, interestingly enough, though, when we looked at the data, I don't have the number here uh, shown on the screen, but 47% of the line of business folks agreed with that statement as that their CIOs were leading those. So there's, there's a gap there. I think that's to be uh, expected. You know, anyone from a leadership standpoint probably thinks they're a little bit more involved than, than other people within their organization. But um, that's one area where there is a little bit of a gap. Um, but again, a very strong number here and 88% of the folks saying that they're, they're leading this more than other folks at their organization. And I think where it might be coming from is when we look at uh, the CEO's top priorities for the CIO in the coming year, uh, and this, was, uh, this changed up quite a bit from last year. So as you can see, uh, number one by, by a pretty good chunk here is uh, lead digital business or digital transformation initiatives. Uh, then that's followed by security, right? So you, anytime you're, you're thinking about you know, moving, moving forward and being uh, innovative, you always got to you know, think about that risk management and that security piece as well. Uh, identify new uh, data-driven business opportunities. Uh, collaborate with other business leaders and then help reach uh, corporate revenue growth comes in the number five spot and then there's a sizable uh, sizable drop from there into the into the teens. Um, so with that, I'm going to pause again. Uh, I want to turn to, to Letty. We'll go to you first again and then go over to John. When you look at this list uh, from a CEO's priorities for their, you know, their head of IT, does that sound uh, familiar as to what you're being asked to do at your organization? Uh, is there anything that you would add to this list um, that, that, you know, that you don't see on here that you think would be important to, to be aware of as well? Uh, I think it's great. Um, it does align with what we're looking at. And let me talk a little bit first about the, uh, you know, how we're leading our digital transformations because CIOs are really in a unique position because we have that enterprise-wide visibility and can pinpoint where we think digital disruption needs to happen. So as a CIO, I report into our chief digital officer, Angela Yoakum, who reports to the CEO. And um, Angela's responsibilities include tech data and clinical informatics. And so the way we run the digital transformations, it's basically a three-legged stool. We've got our chief digital officer, our chief consumer officer, and our chief medical officer so that we can keep the patient in the middle. So um, as a CIO, CIO, my role isn't involved with leading the transformation, but rather, you know, I'm more involved with scouting where the transformation need to take place. And so then when I look at that compared to, you know, our, our CEO's priorities are very clear, you know, in the digital space. You know, um, you know, solutions that provide enhanced access to care, uh, solutions that increase quality and safety, and then solutions that promote um, recruitment and retention. And so a, a combination of, you know, as you see, I need to be able to have that, uh, that partnership across uh, our, our company to be able to deliver these kinds of solutions. John, before we turn to you, Letty, I, I find it interesting. Angela, Angela was a CIO for a number of years at, at some large organizations. Uh, she's moved into that CDO role. Uh, did Novant have a chief digital officer before uh, Angela, and is she the first one that, that they've had? 
Yes, she, uh, she is the first chief digital officer for Novant Health. Okay, thank you very much. You know, it's it's interesting when we start looking at some of the the you know, next steps for a CIO and and you know the CDO role. At least from, from what I'm seeing in, in the you know, various reports that I look at, it's it's not uh, you know it's not everywhere right now. But we are starting to see some some joint CIO CDO type roles. And then obviously, as you mentioned here, you know you're reporting into a CDO who was a former CIO. So, so that is interesting. That's correct. Um, John, what is your uh, what's your feedback in terms of what the uh, what the CEO is asking you to do? Sure, uh, you know I think number one, the list. You know, if I looked at the top five or six, that certainly represents what I'm hearing from uh, from my boss, you know, day in and day out. Just the order might change depending on the the priority, and and I think to to Letty's point on the expectations, you know, the 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 lines are blurring between that head of technology, whatever it's called you know, CIO, CTO, CDO, I don't, you know, whatever three letter uh, acronym is used by each company, you know, they're, they're, be, they're expected to operate as a member of the senior executive team and they're expected to, to take leadership on initiatives. You know, so for example, here at Carhartt, you know, I was asked to, to lead our entire transformation, not just from the technology perspective, but, you know, having the business representatives report functionally into uh, my organization to do that. So, you know, there, it's, it just so happens that I sit in the function of of, uh, of the technology lead, uh, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm I'm expected to operate as as any other member of the senior executive team. Thank you. You know, when I look at this list again, I, I look down toward the bottom there, the, the lead a product innovation effort, and and I'm going to keep my eye on that one over the next few years. I think that's going to that's going to start to climb, and and we're going to share uh, you know a couple other data points here in a minute that I think support that, and then I want to get your feedback on that again as well. So the CIO Plus, that's, a, that's something that, that, that we've been talking a lot about here at the, at the at CIO as a brand. You know, I, I'm the CIO and I've got X other roles that, I'm, uh, that I've got responsibilities for. Maybe it's shared services, something along those lines. Maybe it's facilities. Those are two that I had heard you know, quite frequently in the last three to five or seven years or so. Well, we posed the question out again this year and want to get an understanding of, you know, are your, are your, is your role expanding to include more than just, you know, the technology aspect of it? And as you can see here, 81% resoundingly said, yes, our roles are expanding. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they own that, but they're certainly getting more involved from a leadership capacity into that. Then we wanted to break that down and get an understanding of, okay, what, what, what is it? Where are you spending you know, more of that, that, that time in the, uh, from a responsibility standpoint? And as you can see here, again, data analytics is just a resounding number one, two thirds of the respondents said that. Uh, we talk a little bit about operations here, right? So 43%, um, again, that's an area that I, I, we've seen a few uh, CIOs make that leap into a COO type role. Uh, business development, right? So we're talking about uh, you know helping create new revenue growth, helping you know re reach revenue uh, goals for the organization. So business development comes in at 38 percent, customer service at 32 percent. I had a call yesterday, uh, actually with a, a, a vendor partner of ours, uh, re you know reviewing the results of the study, and they were a little surprised to see customer service. But I think when you talk about you know you talk about all the different ways your customers interacting with you. Uh, you know, more and more now it's becoming digital in an online capacity. So I think it makes sense that the CIOs are getting a lot more involved there. And then we have product development and then a you know, pretty sizable jump uh, down there into marketing, finance, procurement and sales. Um, another new question we asked this year that I found uh, pretty fascinating the results on, we ask is you know, essentially, are you in your role being asked to create new revenue streams for your organization? And 62% of the respondents said that yes, I am being asked to help uh, create new revenue streams uh, within my uh, within my organization. And then we broke that down a little bit and said, okay, you know, thinking about that, what are some of the initiatives uh, that you've put in place? Uh, number one, you know, really is table stakes, right? Learning more about customer needs. Uh, certainly, you can't put anything uh, in place from a product standpoint or a revenue generation standpoint if you don't understand your customers' needs. Uh, but the creating teams focused on innovation, I thought was interesting at 47%. Uh, I hosted a, a CIO roundtable last uh, last week with about 15 CIOs. Actually, John, you were part of that discussion. Um, and we talked a awful lot about setting up teams within your organization. This isn't necessarily the, you know, the one speed, two speed type uh, IT. It's really literally setting up various teams, even going across uh, cross functional and getting other folks involved from the business. But, you know, just ways that you can help stimulate innovation and stimulate growth within your organization. Um, and then you're really uh, another one around that cultivating the entrepreneurial spirit. I think that's uh, you know at a third there. I think that's interesting as well. And you're starting to hear an awful lot more of that, uh, even within some of the largest organizations. 
Um, so I'll pause again here, uh, and, and again, we'll start with you, Letty, and then go over to you, John. Uh, what's your feedback on the, you know, the CIO Plus roles that you see here? Or do you sit within any of those? Do you have other responsibilities you're being uh, asked to, uh, to take care of or lead? Uh, and then really when that, that revenue generating, what does that look like within, within, your, uh, within your role? Yeah, so uh, I came into my role less than a year ago. So the uh, CIO role had already had operations and M&A and consulting uh, delivery. Um, but at the time I came on board, I was given the opportunity to expand my responsibilities. So we had added um, experimentation as a service. Um, we've added the concept of a, or the uh, having a digital business office. Um, we, um, we created a product development arm so that we can retain ownership of our consumer experience, experiences when it comes to, um, you know, direct to, to consumer devices. Um, and then oh, we took on actually consulting sales as well. So, um, so yeah, so I, I agree with you on the, on the uh, customer support part, because as we start looking at implementing technology like Chatbox, chatbots or AI, um, anything that correct, uh, connects directly with the patients, I think we'll, we'll start to get involved. Um, and then on that, the revenue generation piece, uh, I am responsible for reviewing our portfolio of products and services um, that drive the internal value, as well as looking at them for um, the opportunities that can generate revenue externally as well. Um, we've got 75% uh, of the revenue that we're generating comes from leveraging the investments that we've made in our uh, EMR or electronic medical uh, records platform. And uh, the other 25% uh, comes from having a technology transformational expertise in, in the healthcare space. Interesting. Can you expand a little bit on the, the digital business office, the creation of that? What, what does that look like? What are some of the other job titles and roles that might, might fit within that? Yeah, so, you know, when we think about talking about uh, making IT uh, act like a business, we have to perform like one. So creating the metrics, looking at the financials, knowing the numbers, um, that digital business office spans across all of Angela's, our chief digital officer's leadership team and starts knitting together the themes and the messages and the stories. And so part of that digital business office allows us to maintain a portfolio view of how we're performing. Um, and in that office, we have um, an experimentation as a service. Um, you know, we believe that uh, innovation should live everywhere across our, our company. And, um, but our, our, our DPS, our IT organization, should be the ones to help facilitate it and bring it to life. And, and that's the service we're, we're offering is that experimentation through the digital business office. Great, thank you. John, what's, what's, uh, what's going on over at Carhartt from a CIO plus role or, or, or you being responsible for driving some revenue? Okay. Yeah, certainly, much like Letty, I have additional responsibilities. Uh, on the data analytics, you know, with your number one uh, uh, item there, we have not only the data analytics, but the data scientists as well uh, sit in my organization. So it's a centralized approach to uh, data science. I'm also responsible for planning. And for those out there in the retail world, that's everything from the demand side of planning all the way through to the uh, supply chain planning uh, area. So uh, that's uh, one of my uh, teams as well. Uh, and then I mentioned, uh, you know, responsibility for going after a transformation of our of our overall service goals, that back end uh, space. So um, those are kind of three additional uh, teams uh, beyond just a traditional uh, CIO sphere of responsibility. You know, the interesting thing, if I look at the revenue uh, generating, you know, we, we for example, launched an, uh, a new business this year and we took a digital first, you know, type of approach. And, and I think as anybody looks at expanding any business units, mar uh, markets, there's that digital first kind of mentality before you look at, you know, you know heavy capital. And there's no way to to make that happen without that partnership to you know with the CIO or CTO or CDO whoever it might be. So you know I I partnered with uh, the person who's responsible for that P and L to to help build out that strategy. The other thing that um, you mentioned the innovation we run uh, an innovation uh, challenge every quarter. We uh, split out uh, and allocate five percent of our time every quarter for teams to s solely work on experimenting looking for ways to find uh, opportunities to deploy uh, technology with a lot without any real guidelines. We give them free reign to go out and try to solve problems. It's not really driven from a top-down approach. So at any one time, we'll have seven or eight teams each quarter working on that. And then at the end of the quarter, kind of a shark take approach where they'll 
pitch their uh, results to uh, members of the senior executive team. And, and a number of those initiatives became projects subsequently. You know, they're meant to you know, spur uh, thinking, uh, spur creativity. And the last thing I think is interesting, especially for IT organizations that have deployed Agile through their whole uh, environment is that to deploy some of that same Agile thinking to how we go after new business, new markets, you know, that's that whole uh, minimum viable product approach of, of getting something to market, getting there fast and learn versus, you know, building the whole thing and then going to market. So we certainly have taken that MVP approach as we as we enter new market. Great. A couple of follow-up questions on the um, on the five percent of, of time spent uh, with, where, where folks can get into innovation teams. Is that across? Uh, is that across your organization? Or is that just within your IT organization? Right now, it's we freed it up within the IT organization. But every quarter, there's a, a fair number of business colleagues that join those teams uh, to work on it. So the uh, you know the technology team will reach out and say, "Hey, we'd love to get." You know, maybe these couple subject matter experts to work on it, and we've got a number of business colleagues who love doing it. So they've been in, you know, quarter after quarter of, of joining teams. When they get to the Shark Tank, are you referred to as Mr. Wonderful, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably a different name. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and another quick follow-up to that, John. Um, you know, you had mentioned several CIO plus, uh, you know, hats that you wear. Did you come into the role and, and those were all things that you had, had as responsibilities or did you, you gain those as you gain trust and gain you know, credibility within, within Carhartt? Yeah, certainly the latter. Okay. I came in as the CIO and then as time went on, uh, you know, the, the leadership team said, hey, let's, let's ask John to pick up you know, these particular um, additional roles. In the data space, we didn't really have uh, uh, a data program. So, you know, that was myself and my head of data pitching that, you know, we need to go do this and build out a data science program. Got it. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on and take a look at some some of the other uh, data points. And again, we will we will jump right back in with Letty and John in just a few for just a few minutes. So let's take a look at some of the initiatives and I'll do sort of a quick uh, quick setup before we get into into the top uh, business and, and, and tech initiatives for the coming year. This I found uh, fascinating. Um, you know, we asked this question last year, but we didn't break it out by those, those various CIO archetypes, if you will. 78% um, of CIOs say they're communicating with the board of directors more than they ever have before. And then when we took that and broke it down by uh, the folks that, that, that were bucketed in as strategic, uh, as transformational, or as functional, you can see here it's, it's almost a dead heat, and I, I was frankly I was uh, I was shocked by this. I thought the functional would be would be for much further down the list, uh, and strategic at eighty percent is a very strong response. Um, so I think it, it, what really goes to show here is technology is becoming just that much more important within an organization that you have to have that uh, visibility at the board. And, and then when you look at really from a security and a risk management standpoint, uh, I know that's taking up an awful lot mo uh, an awful lot more time uh, from CIOs, and they're you know either working with or bringing their CISOs uh, to these board meetings as well. Sometimes they go separately, but um, you know, certainly that, that, that's a big reason why they're getting a lot more boardroom visibility. Now, this is the first time we're going to bring in the, uh, the line of business response. So what you're seeing here is data that was directed specifically at the 200 uh, line of business respondents. Uh, and basically what we're doing is asking him here, you know, how's that relationship with your head of IT? You know, when you're thinking about uh, a specific technology consideration, uh, how would you consider your relationship with, uh, with, with, uh, with, with uh, her or him? Uh, and really here, it's, uh, you know, really strong results here, right? So 41% consider him to be a strategic advisor, 21% uh, a consultant. Uh, we provided them specifically these, uh, these choices and we provided them with those definitions as well. The key differentiator between strategic advisor and consultant is that term proactively, right? So the strategic advisors are going out, driving change, driving, uh, driving uh, uh, discussions around different technology initiatives. The consultants are really having them more come to them. Uh, risk assessors in there at 10%, that's the, that's the lowest by, by, by one tick. Uh, you can see that's essentially looking at it through a, a risk management um, uh, lens or a governance type of a lens. 20% uh, say cautious voice of reason. So these might be the folks that are you know, a little bit more uh, you know, curmudgeon -y maybe, might gum up the process a little bit, might create some friction, uh, but ultimately I think things will get done. And then the bottom right, that's really a, a, not a good place to be, right? So an autonomous uh, player, essentially folks that are just you know, 
off doing their own thing, not communicating with the business. Uh, you know, they're providing whatever it is from a technology standpoint that they want to provide, not getting that feedback, not being collaborative. Um, so that's obviously, um, you know, at 11%, that's a, that's a strong response that we saw overall here. Now we're going to do another kind of key area of, uh, of the study on an annual basis. Uh, what we're looking at here is, uh, you know, my audience, if you will, the heads of IT is the left-hand column, and then the line of business counterparts is on the right-hand column. Uh, these are the top business initiatives uh, that would essentially lead to an IT investment in the coming year. And what I like to look at is, is where, are there, you know, where are there big gaps, where is there some friction? And, and really for the, for the fourth or fifth year here, we're, we're just not seeing it, folks. You can see they're almost at a, a, you know, almost at a dead heat in terms of uh, uh, the rank order, in terms of you know, what they think is, is most important. Number one, increase uh, operational efficiency. Number two, security. And then number three, improve customer experience. So again, and then grow the business. So again, it's balancing that 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 tightrope between innovation and then uh, you know keeping the operational excellence and keeping our, our organization secure. You know, the one area that we see a little bit of separation here is improved profitability. Uh, the percentages are the same; it's just a rank order difference. But keep in mind, on the line of business side, you've got some CFOs and financial people in there, so they certainly want to be uh, keeping that bottom line, making sure that 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 looks uh, that looks appropriate. Uh, and introduced uh, new digital revenue streams. Um, it's for, far down the list, but I think as we're you know, looking at uh, CIOs becoming more revenue generators, I think that'll probably start to work its way up the list in the coming years. We'll certainly keep, uh, keep tabs on that. Now we're looking at the top technology initiatives uh, that would drive uh, an IT investment in your organization as well. Now, this is where we tend to uh, have some more separation. I'll explain that in a second. Again, left-hand side is a CIO response. Right-hand side is the line of business. Uh, number one this year is data uh, for, for IT. Last year, number one was security. Uh, and as you can see, uh, number one is cloud, uh, interestingly enough, for the line of business. And last year it was data, which dropped into the four spot, not, uh, you know, not significantly behind, but it, but it certainly made a, made a drop. What's really interesting here, and the, the, the list that we provide, uh, it's probably uh, you know, double the size of this, but you know, to be able to present it, you, you know, we, we, we condense it for you. Uh, what's interesting here, though, is you can see enterprise applications there uh, tied for number three on the CIO, and then really far down the list on the line of business. And I think the key here is we ask, uh, you know, lead to an IT investment. I think, you know, line of business, they understand that some of these, you know, monolithic, you know, mega systems are there, they're working. They don't fully understand all that goes into that, the licensing, um, you know, the maintenance and all that that goes in, into the, um, uh, you know, the upkeep for that, uh, that, that technology. You know, it's also interesting here when you look at AI, which is sort of in the middle there, you look at machine learning, you look at IoT down toward the bottom. Those are areas that people, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, get a little uh, you know, curious about and say, why isn't that further up the list? And again, it's it's squarely because we ask about leading to an investment. If I asked a room full of CIOs, you know, what you want to be doing or what you're thinking about piloting or what you think is cool, those would all move the way to the top. Uh, I'm sure many CIOs don't want to be spending time on their on their uh, you know ERP right now. Um, these are the you know, but but when you when you put that in investment on it, it really just changes the game in terms of uh, the response that we get here. Uh, so with that, I'll pause again. I, I, I kind of threw a lot at you, Letty and John, but I want to I want to get your feedback again on the last couple of data points uh, that we have here, primarily around these initiatives. Are they uh, in line with what you're uh, looking at at your organizations, or would you maybe add something different here? Would that rank order look a little bit different within your world? No, they're they're in line, even all the way to um, as your your first uh, slide on the board members. I mean, I was in here six months and I was already in a board meeting. Um, you know, they're very interested about you know what we're doing with the um, the digital business strategy. You know, specifically like. Um, how are digital solutions going to be used to create extreme personalization for our patients? And, you know, what are digital solutions that uh, can enhance our care capabilities? And also, you know, how can the investment that we're making into digital be leveraged with, you know, our joint ventures and, and partnerships? So there, so there is this, um, this interest up and down horizontally, horizontal and vertically um, interest in what we're, what we're doing. And so as I work across, um, you know, our, the, co the company, you know, CIOs um, absolutely are becoming the strategic advisor. Uh, what we did is uh, we changed our language from talking about applications and technology to really talking about business capabilities. And it, and it was a game changer for us because, you know, understanding the intentions behind what it is we're trying to do from a, a capability perspective and then knowing the cool things that technology can do uh, puts us in that seat to be that trusted advisor. 
And, uh, you know, we're also, you know, we're actually finding uh, becoming an advisor regardless if it involves technology or not. So it's almost like the the whiz bang piece of it uh, is just simply part of the package. And so when you take all that and you look at um, the initiatives, this is um, another thing that we're, we, we've done, um, is we've taken a capability-driven approach to product, looking at our products. So we're linking our technology products to capabilities. So I'm not dividing, I'm not comparing goals and to IT initiatives anymore. We're looking at it as a holistic unit. So as we look at prioritization uh, funding, uh, and funding for it, it's inclusive of the technology estate and the impacts there. And so our business initiatives do align with um, with your your top of the of the the list, which is the driving up consumer uh, or access and uh, experience. And then on the IT side, the the technical well technical side, like the, the hygiene stuff, we're absolutely investing in in data. Um, we're doing two key things this year. Um, one, we're we're creating innovative ways to access. Uh, electronic health records. We're also investing in um, data archiving capabilities so that we can keep our life cycle management practices in motion. And this is one of those things that you mentioned earlier, finding that right balance between managing um, innovation and operational excellence. You know, with this product um, model, I have the ability to inject, you know, uh, both of these things at the same time. So I, I'm knocking two things out um, while we, through the year. Excellent, thank you. John, what's your perspective here? Yeah, you know, interestingly, uh, Carhartt's in a situation where we've, we're growing fairly quickly. So the, the focus is, is how to grow that business, how to you know, increase that customer experience while you're growing like that. And then at the same time, your backend processes you know, aren't necessarily set up to operate at the scale at which you were before. So those tend to be our, our main three uh, thrusts right now. And you know, whether you're a business or IT person, that's where you're, we're driving. And that kind of leads on the, in the initiatives. Uh, you know, interestingly, you know, the uh, enterprise applications shows up as one because we're going to replatform our ERP as part of of re-engineering those those business processes to support the growth, uh, data, 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 uh, you know, is is a, a constant uh, conversation. We've made a significant investment. We doubled the data team last year, and you know, there we see so many opportunities. Whether it's using data to predict uh, and and then thereby automate. Uh, our ability to forecast the business and plan the business and react to you know growing or changing market conditions, all the way through to understanding the consumer uh, experience and their their activity, and then even into our supply chain and how to optimize that supply chain. So, you know, we see uh, you know the data and AI as an offshoot of that uh, being a, a significant driver for us if we're really going to differentiate ourselves versus our competitors in the marketplace. Thank you. And I'll ask a follow-up question. Um, it's going back to the, you know, I think both of you would, would, would agree that you're considered strategic advisors within your organization. Uh, so proactively, uh, you know, bringing ideas to the, you know, business side counterparts. Uh, as much as you can share, you're both, um, Letty, you're very new into your position. And John, I, uh, you're, you're what, three, four years now? Is that correct? Yeah, three years. Okay. Uh, so you guys are dragging down the, the average tenure then. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so my, my question is, uh, you know, did, and again, share as much as you can here, but did you come into your roles uh, in the previous CIO had had, had that strategic advisor, um, uh, you know, uh, positioning, or is that something that you had to work uh, work on uh, on creating for for your yourselves and your in your teams? Um, for me, uh, I always like to create it anyway. So I, I'm not familiar what was actually here before, but uh, it's always good to get in and partner up and um, you know share as much information as I can and figure out how I can contribute. Great, and John. Yeah, I, when they were doing the search for for my you know for my position, that was something they were specifically targeting was to bring in somebody you know to be a, a strategic advisor, and you know I've held non IT executive roles, you know, a couple of times. So, you know, that certainly was part of what they were looking for in a, in a CIO was somebody who could operate as both a, a business executive and uh, you know, technology executive. Great. Thank you very much. 
All right, let's move on uh, and, and get to, to the, some of the final data points here. And then again, we we'll want to get your uh, feedback on this as well. So let's look at some of the challenges. And the first one we're going to look at is, is uh, essentially a, a, a digital transformation organization wide uh, challenge. And then the second one we'll look at you know, really within, within your specific IT organization. So this is a, a new question again we asked this year. Uh, what skills uh, do you think your company is most in need of to support digital transformation? Uh, as you can see here, by far and away, the number one uh, selection is technology integration implementation. Uh, that is number one for the line of business as well. Uh, you can see change management uh, comes in number two, tied with uh, strategy building uh, on the CIO response uh, at 40%. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it, it drops all the way to number eight on line of business. And I find that real interesting around change management. Again, uh, I, I mentioned the round table that I, I, I was fortunate enough to host last week when I shared this uh, data point with them at pretty much to a T. Everyone, um, uh, everyone that was at the, uh, at the table uh, had some, uh, you know, a lot of comments around change management, how important it is and how much of an emphasis they're placing on that. Um, I was a little surprised to see business relationship management, uh, you know, as far down as it was there, uh, tied, you know, tied for number five. Uh, and then down toward the bottom again, uh, the number three uh, position that we saw for the line of business was financial and cost management. And again, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, fairly far down the list here uh, from a CIO perspective. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll pause right here before we get to the you know, IT specific skills gaps that are on your teams. And, and again, we'll, we'll go to we'll go to Letty. We'll go to you again first, and then over to John. Uh, when when I pose a question like this, and you're looking at your organization wide, what are those um, sort of skills that, that that you think your company is most in need of? Does, that, does this match up with it, or would you maybe change a couple of those around, or add something in there that that, that we didn't even think about putting in? Yeah, for, for me, um, we're coming in right in the middle, right at that, uh, that we need this success measurement piece. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with a lot of smart people and, and uh, healthcare does a lot of acquisition. So uh, implementing change and driving change is, is really, um, you know, it's something that we're good at. So the strategy piece is good. Visioning's good. Um, coming together to do integ integration and change management delivery is great, but as we um, we could probably get better at the follow through, right? By defining what success looks like, you know, and then and then measuring it. Great, thank you, and John. What's this list look like uh, compared to what you would say over at, uh, at your organization? Yeah, you know, we're interestingly we're I would say we're very very well set in terms of business relationship management, project management. You know, the execution of of initiatives and the the intersection with the business colleagues is fantastic. So interestingly, I would have taken the top three as probably our top three. I mean, we do a good job of recruiting people and, and bringing talent into the organization. But, you know, the, the rate at which things are changing on the technology space, you know, the, the breadth of different technologies, you know, pre presents a unique challenge. And a lot you can have we have to bring in partners to help us. And how do you manage that integration with those partners? You know, as you bring in specific niche uh, type technologies or tools to fill in. Uh, interestingly, the change management uh, is one that, you know, we, we've we not been able to keep that inside of Carhartt. And that's probably something that we'll continue to, to probably source in and bring in, you know, experts in that change management to help us work through it. If I look at projects that maybe the, the deployment wasn't as successful as it should have been. It, you know, almost universally it's related to the, to the change management effort. And on the strategy side, it's, it's not that, you know, the folks, you know, aren't, um, you know, able to, to lay out a strategic roadmap. It's, it's making sure that, you know, we freed up their time as well to make sure we've got roadmaps for our key platforms and that they're really helping to anticipate things that aren't even thought of as a, as an opportunity or a problem. And, and that's just gonna take time, experience uh, for, you know, for the, not only the, the executives that work for me, but the managers, you know, we've got to make sure it's all the way down to that level that, that they're able to, to take that strategy piece and the change management piece and, and put those into practice. And what are your thoughts on the, the business relationship management? I, again, from my perspective, and obviously I'm, I'm not a CIO, nor do I play one on TV, um, it, 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 you know, being, being down in that 25% you know, seemed a little bit light to me. Does that, do you have them on your teams? Uh, are, they, are they in abundance on your teams? Are they hard to find? You know, what, what does that look like right now? Uh, you always ask me or Letty first, I guess. Either, Go Sorry. Letty go yeah. first. Yeah, yeah so, um, 
business relationship management, we're, we're kind of putting in as our product owners, um, we're in, which are senior executive leaders as well. So um, I, I think it, it fits right there for us. I don't, we don't have it as a separate independent role. Um, it is a, 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 a separate job. It is part of the product owner's responsibility to manage uh, and work with the business partners and be part of that business. Great. Yeah, I would say the same thing. We we don't have, um, I'm not a fan of separate BRM role. Okay. Uh, I find that oftentimes it actually creates conflict within the IT organization uh, and, and adds some inefficiency. So we've got it as the, the management team within our solutions delivery group. Um, that's their responsibility. They take that, that BRM uh, lead and, and split it up. Uh, and then they'll work with the um, the product owners back in their business units, and those product owners are 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 prioritizing the backlog. But you know, it's those those various um, members of the solutions delivery group that take that that BRM role. Got it, I, I, Letty. I want to go back to you again real quick because vendor management's on here at at, at 14% in the in the in the last spot. And you had mentioned, you know, earlier in the discussion, it's it's a, an area that, that that still takes up some of your time. What would you attribute to you know? Where, where it takes up your time, where it shows up on this list. What's that look like for you in terms of vendor management? How sophisticated are you as well? Do you have scorecarding that you do with your vendors? What's that, what's that look like? Yeah, it's not so much more about the sophistication, but rather the volume. Um, you know, healthcare, is, the capabilities are complex and broad, right, compared to maybe like a retail organization where you've got, you know, broad, lots of products. Um, but healthcare is, has a lot of capabilities. And so if you just look at our uh, capabilities for delivering care, you know, offering it, planning it, deliver and supporting it, we've got over 500 vendors that we're working with that have products in that layer. And so um, so where we, where we need vendor management capabilities is on the technology side to know really how to work with them, stay aligned with their roadmaps, uh, where are they going, what are we gonna bring in house? Because we're not a development shop, uh, nor do we wanna be, right? We're, we've got the luxury of being on that consumer side of picking products um, on behalf of our, our patients and our, and our providers. So, so that's, how, that's what's happening with vendor management while my time's going into vendor management. Got it, makes a lot of sense. All right, so now let's take a look at the um, at, at the skills gap that that would exist within your own within your own teams, right? And so um, this changed up quite a bit from from last year. Uh, number one, we've talked a lot about data today. Uh, number one, far and away, forty two percent data science and analytics. Uh, number two is security, and interestingly enough, those two were were pretty much at a dead heat last year. Uh, cloud was number three last year. That's dropped into to the four spot uh, pretty substantially. And AI has moved its way up into the number three position here, and obviously there's an awful lot going on uh, from an AI perspective um, uh, across the board. Even our, our, our agenda conference is coming up in a couple months. Uh, a lot of our Digital Edge 50 uh, award winners have AI pro programs and, and, and initiatives that they're, that, that they're getting out there from a, an award standpoint. Um, so, you know, my question here is, um, what does this look like within, again, within your organizations? Does this match with where you're seeing, uh, you know, a need for or a gap in skills? And then, you know, again, last week we talked a lot about, um, you know, are we going to reskill or are we going to go ahead and, and, and look to bring on uh, other folks and rehire for some of these positions? You know, what's the dynamic of that within your organizations? And even, you know, looking at it from a, uh, a geographic standpoint, do you have challenges, uh, you know, recruiting and getting the talent that you need within some of these, um, you know, some of these more sophisticated and kind of newer uh, types of technologies or again, uh, you know, across security in general. And, um, and again, Letty, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you first and then, and, uh, and then have John uh, give some feedback. Okay, um, I'm going with your first one, the data scientist and the last one, the enterprise architect. Um, data scientist, like we just talked about, it's a highly sought after skill set um, in a very competitive market. And the things that we're doing, um, you know, to scale that that skill set is bringing in younger talent and and farming them and farming them the way to um, understand healthcare data, um, which is a huge beast. Um, but the reason I'm going for enterprise architect is for what I we just talked about on vendor management. You know, I need to have that ability to have an enterprise view and look at interoperability between all of these products. And so, um, finding the architects with that enterprise skill set to uh, looking at vendor products versus internally built applications is what's really, really difficult for us. You know, the, um, you know, th being able to uh, bring them in, maybe bring them in in one of the product areas that uh, a vendor area that we have a, a, a lot of products for, and then teaching them how the rest of it works together. So I'm 
you know, enterprise architecture is on my list. Got it. John? Yeah, you know, interestingly, uh, we've been fairly successful in recruiting people. So maybe we're in a good market. Uh, the only, I would say the only area that we've struggled a little bit, same thing, was architecture. And, and that was really because more of what we were looking for in the soft skills of the architect as opposed to the hard skills, because we could certainly find those, those type of folks. Um, but you know, similar to Letty, our approach on the data science, which could have been a problem for us, uh, was a little different. You know, if you look at what the unicorn uh, that everybody looks for in the data scientist, that's, that's somebody who's got five to seven years of industry experience, they've got the technical skills, and they've got the soft skills. Well, you know, one, we can't afford those people. Uh, and two, you know, they're difficult to, to get out. So we made the decision that we were going to hire for the um, technical skills and the soft skills, and we would teach them the industry. So we were taking people right out of PhD or, or master's. Maybe they had two years of experience, but we didn't care if it was in retail space. Uh, and, and that's been pretty successful. We were able to recruit really you know, talented folks and, and we'll, we'll continue to build that team uh, from there. In terms of the reskill though, it, you know, we didn't see that as a real opportunity in the data science space. Um, you, you've got to have the applied statistics uh, education and you just can't take a, a, a data architect or a data engineer and say, okay, you, know, you spend a little time and learn to be uh, a data scientist. You know, there are some programs out there, but those are year to year and a half long programs that it would require those people to go through. So that would probably be the opportunity, but would require a significant level of, of commitment, both from the employer and from the employee to make that kind of transition to, I think data scientists is probably the hardest, hardest thing yeah. for a reskill uh, situation in IT. I'm not sure if probably Letty might have the same opinion or not. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Interesting, John. We we first met uh, a couple of years ago at our CIA 100 uh, event out at the Broadmoor, and, and you had mentioned at the si at the time also that you know Carhartt doesn't really have a a, a huge challenge when it, when it comes to hiring. So, you know, what would you attribute to that? Um, you know, are you offering free clothes or something along those lines? Uh, what would you attribute to that? And then, you know, are you are you are you getting most of your your new hires, uh, you know, from within the Michigan Great Lakes greater area? Or are you having to go outside of that to pull folks in as well? Yeah. Uh, well, I think one, it helps that you, we have a great brand. So, you know, Carhartt you know, has a lot of recognition. People love the, the DNA and, and what it stands for. Um, you know, we're able to get a lot of folks who want to come back home to Michigan, you know, and maybe moved away for college, maybe have done something else. And, and so I, I, I've seen a number of folks in not just the technology, but in the, my planning team, same thing. We're able to, to recruit those people to come there. And then, and then within the market, uh, able to uh, to recruit as well. So we we certainly are not a premium. You know, it's not like we're paying top dollar. We pay market rates. So, but I do think the brand and how we treat employees. You know, you know, folks talk to one another out in the the marketplace. So interesting. And, and Letty, I'll, I'll turn to you real quick. What does the you know what's the competition look like for you? I believe you're in Charlotte, correct? Uh, yes, I'm, so, we're based in Charlotte and um, other multiple locations across the, the East Coast. Um, and right now, it hasn't been difficult to find the talent because we're tapping into our technology uh, network. Um, and healthcare is a great place to be right now. So getting people to come over and, and be part of the transformation journey and the digital journey is um, it's, an, it's an easy sell. Now, I say that. You know, still nine months in, I haven't gotten past you know the internal networks of of, of friends and, and LinkedIn um, LinkedIn colleagues. So I'll know by next year what that right. the, you know bring in resources really looks like. How many open recs do each of you have for anyone that might be interested? It's uh that's viewing right now. <laughs> if my CFO is listening, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got opportunities. We've got plenty of opportunities. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Same. We've got we've there's probably any one time double digit. You know opportunities available. Excellent, excellent. Um, so that's that's it from uh, really from the from the numbers standpoint here. Uh, looking at the the conclusions, I'll, I'll kind of briefly go through this, and I think Tom's got a couple couple follow up questions that he's gonna he's gonna throw out to Letty and, and, and to John. But really, you know, 
spending the time, you know, we're really talking about that that balance that, that exists again in that tightrope between, you know, innovation and operations. Sound like a broken record there, but the the, the numbers uh, tell us that that's not changing. Um, the CIOs tell us that's not changing. When we talk to Letty, we talk to John, uh, you know, across the country, uh, that, that's really what we see. Um, you know, really got to focus on the customer here. Uh, that's going to help lead uh, opportunity for revenue growth. That's what your CEO is asking you to do. Uh, we see these CIO plus roles really moving into more of a plus plus or you know other other aspects that they're building out. You know, far far beyond uh, shared services and facilities, which is what I again I used to hear you know five or seven uh, five or seven years ago. Uh, now they're moving into more of those customer focused types of roles. Uh, and then again, I, I think it's really interesting that that, that you know almost two thirds of the respondents uh, you know across the board say that they're being uh, looked at to, to, to and being tasked with opening up new new revenue generating opportunities. I think it's an, a fantastic place for CIOs to be right now. Uh, the more that they can spend time focused on the customer, focused on uh, the, you know the corporation, the revenue, the growth. I think uh, obviously the better off they'll be. Uh, but certainly make sure that uh, that those trains are that those trains are on time as well. Uh, so with that, uh, Tom, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. I think we just have a couple more minutes here, and All I think right. you have a couple questions. I do, and. Uh, we uh, weren't able to appear you ahead of time, so if you want to pass on these, you can. But <laughs> one of them was around CIO tenure and it had grown significantly in the last year, from according to the report. Uh, the question was, is that you consider that a good sign of job security or is it perhaps a ceiling for, for CIOs that they're bumping into? Uh, Letty, if you want to take a swing at that and uh, what you think about CIO tenure. Uh, well, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> you know, I'm excited to be in the CIO role spot. So um, seven years doesn't seem like, you know, a ceiling for me at this point. Um, but I do know, um, you know, just through the mentors that I've had um, and this opportunity of chief digital officers that are opening up, you know, it does broaden that that horizon. So it's going to be interesting to see what next year's numbers look like um, for that CIO. Because I, I agree with you. I think there's going to be this plight over to a, a new um a new role for that uh, chief digital officer. Excellent, John. Any uh, perspective on the tenure? Yeah, I, I don't. The yeah, same thing. I don't think there's a, a ceiling, uh, but it's it's up to the, the talent of the of the technology leader, the CIO. You know, a CIO is very good is going to get opportunities, and those that aren't, maybe there is a ceiling for them. Uh, but you know, I think if it's like me, I love my job, and so if you love your job, you love the company you work for. You know, you're probably going to stay there. And, you know, if you've got great colleagues on your senior leadership team, it makes it a pleasure to come in every day. So that's certainly my where I'm at. So excellent. All right. Well, uh, we're getting close to the end of the time. But we'll, we'll try to throw one more out here. Uh, CIO is saying their role is becoming more digital and innovation focused, but they're also finding it more challenging to balance innovation activities and operational responsibilities. Uh, since those operational efficiencies are primary concerns, does this signal that innovation activities may be scaled back at some point or the CIO might have to divest some duties to maintain innovation growth and operational excellence? John, do you want to try tackling that one first? Sure. I think back to my earlier point, I don't see them um, you know, at, taking away from the head of technology. What I, Unless the, the CIO doesn't do the, the right thing, which is make sure they have a talented team below them. That can you know take those responsibilities and operate at that level, and you know trust them. So um, I said I think a CIO doesn't do that. Certainly, the risks having it taken away then. Yeah, yeah. For uh, for us, it's um, we got to do both. So which is why again a capability driven product model. I can manage each product and each priority in that backlog to do both uh, and innovate for the the increased value of the capability as well as you know, operational excellent uh, and operational plays. Excellent. All right. Well, we're right at the top of the hour here, so we're going to wrap okay. things up. Thank you so much, John and Letty. really appreciate your time today. And thank you, Adam. did a great job presenting all the data once again. Thank much you. appreciated. Uh, this concludes today's session. On behalf of the CIO Executive Council, thank you for joining us and see you next time.